All right, so what's the difference between a inequality that looks like this and one that looks like this? Now, you might go through the obvious. Yes, this is a greater than symbol. This is a less than or equal to. Done, well, bam, video's over. But the point that I want to go over is, what do we need to know when we are solving a absolute value inequality when we have that greater than symbol compared to the less than or equal to? And it's really important to understand when we have an absolute value that is going to be greater than a value, this is gonna be what we call exclusive. And when we have something that's less than or equal to, that is going to be inclusive. All right, and that's gonna be very important when we look into graphing our solutions to understand what exactly we are looking for. So when we're looking at a exclusive solution, what that represents is our solution is either going to be true for one or the other. Whereas when we're looking at something inclusive, we're looking for the value to be true for both of those values. That's what's really, really important to understand when we look into the graphical approach. So when we're looking at exclusive, we're thinking of the word or. When we're thinking of inclusive, we're thinking of the word and. Now, what we simply want to do is just remember when we have the absolute value of something, for instance, absolute value of x is equal to, let's say, 2, we know that x could equal a 2 or x could also equal a negative 2, right? Both of those solutions could be true from this and that we don't have enough information to know which one is going to be best. So when we have an absolute value, we need to make sure we take into account the positive as well as the negative solution. So in this first one, we have or, and that's gonna be the words I'm gonna use. I'm gonna say, well, five minus two x can be greater than seven or five minus two x can be less than a negative seven. Because just remember, when we go back to inequalities, when we change or when we multiply or divide by negative on both sides, we have to go ahead and flip the inequality. So when you're dealing with something like this, you're gonna have that positive seven, but when we take a negative, you can kind of think about multiplying that by negative, that's going to reflect the sign. Now over here, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but this and is gonna be so important. So in this case, we have a five minus a two x is less than or equal to seven. And what also has to be true, is five minus two x has to be greater than or equal to, again, a negative seven, all right? So let's go through the step-by-step -step process here to go ahead and solve this. Again, when we just wanna solve for x, you're going to isolate that, so we're gonna undo addition by five. We get a negative two x is greater than a two, divide by negative two, divide by negative two. Remember, we're gonna go ahead and flip the signs, so x is going to be less than a negative one. Or, in this case, now we're again doing the same process. We're gonna subtract the five. Obviously, remember this is a negative seven, so if you owe me seven dollars, you borrow five more dollars, you now owe me twelve dollars. So this is a negative two x is less than a negative twelve, divide by negative two, divide by negative two. X is now going to be greater than a positive six, right? So for this to be true, either one or the other are going to be true. We'll get into the graphing here in just a second. Now let's go through the process over here for this and. So if I subtract a five, I get a negative two x is going to be less than or equal to a positive two, divide by negative two, divide by negative two. Now again, remember, flip the sign, so x is going to be greater than or equal to a negative one. Now over here, again, just going through the same steps, we're gonna do a negative five, subtract on both sides. So I have a negative two x is going to be greater than or equal to a negative 12, divide by negative two on both sides. Again, remember we need to flip the sign. So X is now going to be a less than or equal to a positive six. You could also go ahead and create a compound inequality. That's usually a helpful tip in that case. Rather than solving them separately, you could also just go ahead and rewrite it like this. So you could say a negative seven has to be less than or equal to a five minus a two X, which has to be less than or equal to a positive seven. This would go ahead and yield the exact same results and it's a little bit faster. But my goal here was just to show you the step-by-step -step process. So now we can see what exactly these solutions are gonna represent on a number line. So let's go and look at this one, this or solution. So in this case, we have x has to be less than negative one. So that's less than. So again, that's actually gonna be not included. So we're gonna use an open circle. And for all values that are going to be less than zero, it's gonna be all the values going over here. For x is greater than six, again, that's going to be not including six. So we're gonna use an open circle. And for all values that are gonna be greater than six, it's gonna be over here. So you can see, to satisfy this inequality, you have to have either a value of x that is going to be less than negative one, or you're gonna have a value of x that has to be greater than a six. Now, let's go and look in the inclusive one. In this case, I have x has to be greater than a negative one, greater than or equal to, so that's gonna be a filled in circle. Now, that's gonna be all values going over to the right, right? But then over here, we have x has to be less than or equal to a negative six. Again, all filled in values going over this way. 
Now, if you don't understand the difference between this and and the or, you would look at this and say, well, these two graphs make up all of the solutions, right? But the inclusive, what that means is both of these values have to be true. The only values that satisfy both of these inequalities is gonna be between the values of negative one and six. You can see between negative one and six, both of these graphs are going to be included. So therefore the value for this solution, for this inequality, has to be between negative one and six.